Next on MLR Weekly, owner of Major League Rugby's reigning champs, Guy Bolton of Rugby New York, Old Glory DC General Manager Marco Blanco, three-time Rugby World Cup Eagle Threaten Palamo, and Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, and... Lean and limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hello and welcome to MLR Weekly, as presented by Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City, the Big Apple, baby. But I'll be on the road in this one as well, courtesy of Sheehy Auto Stores. Who are our guests? Well, we've got Mr. Guy Bolton owner of Rugby New York's Ironworkers. We also have general manager of Old Glory DC, Marcelo Blanco, and three-time Rugby World Cup star, Threat and Palamo. But before we get to any of them, we have our recurring segment, Rugby Morning's Coffee Break with John Fitzpatrick giving us MLR headlines. John, hello. What have you got for us? Hey, Matt. The Dallas Jackals have signed Fujian Lock my Kelly Nairo Maitoga. Nicknamed the Fijian Godzilla because he's 6'5", 270 pounds. Nairo Matoga played for the Houston Sabercats last season. And with Toga being the last part of his last name, fans can have some fun with... Toga! 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 Next! The San Diego Legion have re-signed prop Chris Bauman, the former USA international who made 16 appearances with San Diego last season, returns to the Legion for his third season. Probably has the best hair in MLR, but not that you know anything about that, Matt. Uh, one can dream, and I do have it on good intelligence or lack of intelligence that Chris may or may not be the illeg illegitimate son, that's easy for me to say, of Burt Reynolds. This is terrible. Next! MLR preseason results, Old Glory DC lost 28-33 to the New York Ironworkers. The Dallas Jackals lost 19-45 to to Nola Gold. Utah Warriors and Rugby ATL played to a draw 31 all, and the Seattle Seawolves shut out the American Raptors 47 to 0. Wow, and that means that maybe the Raptors have a little of that dinosaur egg on their face. Next! There are seven preseason games left before the start of the regular season in MLR. Matt, how excited are you for the start of MLR? I'm very, very excited. You know, we had some great guests in the offseason, players, coaches, but there's nothing like in-game, in-season action to talk about. Very excited about it. Next! Matt, that's all I got. Back to you, brother. All right, John, thank you very much. On that note, we have to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Mr. Marcelo Blanco of Old Glory DC after this. Selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at she -he. She -he .com. And we are back, but not for long because MLR Weekly's on the road again, this time in the nation's capital, courtesy of Sheehy Auto Stores. And we are back at the St. James Training Center with the general manager of executive operations and anything not considered rugby except when it comes to recruiting players from South America, Mr. Marcelo Blanco. Marcelo, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing, man? How's everybody doing? So just for the folks at home, and we're going to educate ourselves, you are pretty, pretty much a smarty pants. You were a success in the business world, Deutsche Bank. That right. is correct. Yeah, I worked in Wall Street for 20 plus years. Then I went back to Argentina. I worked for the government of Argentina. Wow. I was under Secretary of Energy and then Secretary of Finance. Then I was teaching at the university and rugby is my passion. You know, I was out of retirement and because I've been working with Scotland for two and a half years now. Can you do a Scottish accent? No, I cannot. Can you imitate Sean Connery? No, I cannot. Unfortunately, I can't. So basically, it's called a new long story short. I say, Marcelo, no, come and help us. And I be, I love it. This is my passion. This is my dream. This is Disneyland for me. Disneyland, truly Disneyland. So what's been the biggest challenge for you coming here to D.C., trying to build this program up to be one of the top in the league in wins and losses? Because it's already a top organization off the field. Honestly, selling tickets. We need to create brand awareness. And my challenge is to make sure that every single person walking 
on the streets of the DC area knows about our glory. And that has been a challenge because I go to a restaurant with a Sheehy uh, Old Glory logo and they don't know us. You slipped, and that is you slipped into Sheehy. Yeah, Sheehy because, Auto Stores, that's how I got here in my Sheehy Auto well, Stores car. I drive a Sheehy car too. So Paul Sheehy has been great. He's been supporting me. He's been writing the checks, to be honest with you. And he loves rugby as much as I do. And the two of us really go great. The same with Chris. I cannot speak louder about the ownership. But the challenge is selling tickets. These organizations in MLR are still building up their infrastructure, still building up their staff. Everybody's been wearing 15 hats at a time. And now it seems like they've got somebody that knows what he's doing in here. We are like a startup. You know, we try to do everything and there's so much competition on the street. I mean, look at DC, 20 teams, four professional teams. You have college teams, you yeah. have high school teams, women's team, which is great. You know, I love women's sport. So the competition is out there. We just need to make sure they're all glory. And we're competing with concerts. Yeah, yeah. Everything, you know, it's just family entertainment. So we need to deliver a product. And the product is not only 80 minutes of rugby. The product is an hour before, an hour after. Make sure that the fans love to be here. They want to be here. And we need to deliver that content. You know? Well, I think it's, 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 it's happening. You know, it's not fast enough for you, certainly. But it is definitely happening. And the word, you know, it's incumbent on people like me, too, to help get that word out. Right? So... We're getting there, brother. We're getting there. It's, I, I got to tell you, for you, it's probably not fast enough. It's move, moving at a glacial pace. But for somebody like me, where there was no th imagination of professional rugby when I was playing in college and playing men's club rugby, we'd watch the same tape of the All Blacks versus the Barbarians over and over again, and that was it. No, now I'm kids not... are, have the opportunity to come to a facility for a preseason pre game. No, no, like I this. was excited to, when I saw so many people. I mean, we sold 450 tickets. We gave out 20, uh, 1,200 tickets, you know, for sponsors, things like that. To see this capacity crowd is, is amazing. Yeah. And also you see so much talent because you have players from Argentina, New Zealand, Ireland, Samoa. I mean, plus the American yeah. talent. You know, this is great. You got the young young studs up front like a Jack Iscaro, who is one of the uh, Eagles, better front row players in the United Great States. Prop, yes. Yeah, Corey Daniels, Jamma, you know, Jameson, you know, Ben Bonasso. You know, he's the captain of rugby in uh, New York. He's from Argentina, born in Argentina, plays for the Eagles. So much breath. He was here. born in Connecticut. In Greenwich, Connecticut. <laughs> yes. I yeah. saw him yeah. in diapers. Yeah. Yeah. I know the parents very yeah. well, you know. And he you've was. got, of course, you've got three-time Rugby World Cup guy, Threaten Palamo. Right? Totally. Four times. Four times, that's right. One, Four th times. The sevens. Yeah. Said, right? yeah. Four times. And he's great. Unfortunately, he's not playing today, but I can't wait to see him on the pitch. Well, know? it's like LeBron James. You know, he's, he's got to sit out a couple of games during the year. People people want to see him play, but you know what? He's got to get his, yeah. his rest, too, otherwise. And wait for the second half. You know, we have, you know, former Puma, you know, Tito Diaz Bonilla. He played for the Puma, he played Leicester, he plays Racing 92, he's playing in Sharks, you know, in South Africa. Right, he's been in Super Rugby, he's Ex been in the URC. He took the Jaguars, you know, all the way to the finals of Super yeah. Rugby. We lost against Crusaders. Yeah. I was at that stadium at the time, so the guy's phenomenal. Final thoughts for you, for the fans at home in the D.C. area. You have my personal commitment that I'm going to deliver to you together with my tremendous team the best experience ever. Just trust us. If you come to the stadium, there's something that you don't like, talk to me. I make sure that you have a better experience. But trust and please join us. Trust your leaders in Washington is what the message is. For That's Oldsburg. what it is. No <laughs> politically, sports-wise. Sports-wise. Trust me. Sports-wise. Thank you, Marcelo. No, thank you for having me. This is great. All right. We'll be right back after this been blind since I was four and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label none of that stuff influences me I drink beer because of the taste and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon it has the taste and the flavor what do you think's on the label I think there's a a naked woman riding on a unicorn jumping over fire Oh, that's good beer. And we 
are back with one of not only my favorite rugby players of all time, but one of my favorite people, three-time Rugby World Cup member of the United States Eagles, great American, right here in Washington, D.C., Mr. Threaten Palamo. Threaten, great to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for having me. So, Threaten, let's get right to it. Your general manager, Marcelo Blanco, said that you played in four World Cups. I graciously said, well, well, maybe it was the Sevens World Cup, but we both know it was three World Cups, but that is still a lot of rugby to play. Yeah, it, it is three. That's correct. Uh, there's one that was kind of lost in the middle. I was in uh, college while, uh, while I, I could have been eligible. I wish I had gone, but... You, yeah, you were like one of these guys. You had this um, a, a, a big chunk of downtime between World Cup appearances, right? Yeah. And then you did two in a row. Yeah, I don't have many caps for the Eagles, but I have... All my caps are usually are, are the World Cup ones, so at least I got the ones that, that I'm, I'm thankful for. So. And, and you played sevens for the national team, too. Correct, yeah. I played with the sevens. I uh, did a little bit of Samoan sevens as well, and then uh, jumped on to the, to the Eagles. So would that be allowed today in, with the current rules? And um, if, I guess you have I think to have you have to hold that a few years, yeah. yeah but sevens is different than 15. Yeah, so I was 17 at the time, so then I think... It's not until you're 18 where those rules apply. Oh. So. so you were 17 representing Samoa in sevens? Yeah, I was living there anyway. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. But that's still, still an accomplishment. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was pretty surreal to play for, to represent both of my countries. So, wow. so yeah. you ended up playing college football at the University of Utah. That's yes? right, yes. So were you playing rugby at the same time? Yeah, uh, I did my freshman year um, playing rugby and then... I walked on and got my scholarship to play uh, college football. So that was a surreal experience as well. Oh my God. With this career that you've had now, because I've seen you a thousand times over the years, and every time I've seen you, you pretty much, uh, it's, uh, it's, I'm done. <laughs> and you're still, you're still purring. Yeah, I mean, every year I keep thinking it's the last one. I've been blessed with a wife that lets me do this for as long as I like. Um, family as well. Everyone's telling me when this is, when this is done, you know it's done. Yeah. So give it all you can while you're young enough to give it a shot so i'm enjoying it especially like uh, marcelo was saying it's a startup love to be a part of it yeah um, watch this grow and say i was part of i was there in the beginnings what's after rugby for threat and palama that's the uh million dollar question Broadcast for every booth? no i don't think well, i can why? do that no, that's a gift that you've got God, that's you've something got, i can't got it right here you're looking uh, at the right cameras <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, you always have a home as a correspondent on under the rugby wrap up umbrella, MLR Weekly, whatever, baby. Thank you. You are more than welcome. It's always great to see you. You too. All right. Mr. Threaten Palamo, three time Rugby World Cup <laughs> Eagle. Three times in a World Cup. Threaten Palamo. We have to take a quick break and we'll be right back with New York owner Guy Bolton after this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. And we are back. We have the pleasure of welcoming in the owner of my favorite MLR team. Yeah, I'm going to say my favorite team. Everybody just chill out. But I'm a New York guy. It happens organically. But this isn't about me. It's about Mr. Guy Bolton, owner of Rugby New York's Ironworkers. Guy, welcome to MLR Weekly. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me on the show. All right. So, Guy, let's get that one question that I know you must be asked all the time. And you can can you categorically deny or confirm that Michael, the singer, is your brother? Yeah, no, he is <laughs> he's not my brother. Thank goodness. <laughs> right, that was the most difficult question of this interview, perhaps, for you to answer, sir. So uh, no, no relationship whatsoever. No relation, no nothing. You heard it here on MLR Weekly, ladies and gentlemen. What an answer. What a story. Okay, enough of the silliness. Can you believe that your team is entering its fifth full se or fifth season in the MLR? We had the the COVID shortened season, but it's the fifth season and it's been an amazing journey. I would, I would imagine what has building out a professional team in New York city taught you, what have you learned from what was considered impossible? Well, it's certainly not as easy as we ever thought or imagined it would be. Um, but, uh, the things that we've learned is, is, you know, that New York is its own group, right? It's its own, uh, 
um, population. It's a melting pot. And uh, we, we're just doing everything we can to connect with, with the folks that want to come and watch rugby, play rugby, and enjoy the game. We want it to be a family experience. And um, we, we truly believe that we're on the right track to do that. And you've had one heck of an off season. You're defending the title up. Well, we'll get to that in a second. But you've got a new branding. You've got a new home. You've got a new coach. You've got a lot of stuff in place. Yeah. No, Matt, we're, we're really excited about that. The, the fact that we've got a, we finally got a home. We're no longer nomadic. Um, it always comes with its challenges when you're nomadic because uh, every time you move, uh, you're looking for a new fan base. And uh, this time, we finally found a home that we believe that we can rest in for quite some time. Um, the folks over at Mount Vernon have been fantastic in helping us out with that and getting that stadium. And now we're in the process of getting it ready for our first home game. In regards to the the Iron Workers, uh, really, really proud of that branding. Uh, we, we, it came from within the team. Um, it's something that we 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 truly believe is is part of New York and changing the skyline is exactly what we're looking to do here in, in New York and, and getting people into watching rugby and enjoying the game for what it is. And uh, um, changing the skyline is is right within the within the realms of the iron workers because that's exactly what they did back in, in history. And anyone that knows New York history knows that famous photo of those guys sitting on that skyscraper. And uh, that that's 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 we feel in that same position. And uh, and the folks at the Iron Workers have been tremendously helpful in, in getting us to the point where this is our brand now, and uh, we're incredibly proud of it. All right. So I drove up to that stadium, and as you, you you approach it, I was like, I got the I got the feeling like, oh wow, okay, we now have a professional home for yes. the team. And I'm not knocking the other facilities because nobody knows the struggles that you guys had to go through in New York city, particularly during COVID to get a venue. All right. So you guys have that shield to hoist at a home match. How has the pressure of repeating affected your off season? The boys in the, in the locker room want to repeat. Um, you know, we, we had some, some losses, some guys retiring and some guys moving on to Super Rugby, which is fantastic for them. And uh, I think we've done a fantastic rebuild over the over the um, the off season uh, to replace some of our key players. And I truly believe that we will repeat this year. The great thing about what the MLR is doing is is creating some some local players within the US that will start being able to compete with with some of the international teams and uh, bringing them together. Um, in the MLR competition is, is one of the the driving forces of why we're all doing this. Um, it is the love of the game, of course, too, but it's also about upskilling the uh, the local players and uh, and getting them more game time. And, and that's that's pivotal with with what we're doing with the MLR. And and, and we're starting to see the fruits of our labor from that perspective. And players are um, are getting better, and uh, more importantly, they are now playing um, and representing the US team. What's your view of the relationship between Major League Rugby, USA Rugby, World Rugby, Super Rugby Americas, and the American Raptors? Yeah, look, I think everyone's in the same room having a chat. Um, I think that's a great step in the right direction, uh, especially USA Rugby and, and World Rugby. Um, uh, we, we're all trying to uh, maneuver and do what we need to do in order to make sure that it's the, the 2031 Rugby World Cup campaign is as successful as possible. Um, and uh, we need all of us in the room to be able to do that. So I think it's all going just fine uh, from my understanding. I'm not in the fray, but, um, you know, the fact that we're all in the same room having a chat, I, I, I think is, is, is leap years from where it was maybe three, four, five years ago. Should Team USA's Eagles be on one team, whether it be in the MLR or with the American Raptors? No, I don't think that it's a good idea for the USA team to – to kind of branch off on their own and then just play exhibition matches throughout the year. Yeah, I just don't think they're going to get enough game time and I don't think they're going to get enough continuity. Um, Agreed. And cohesion. So I think it's great that these guys are playing um, in the um, in the MLR. And I also believe truly that uh, if you can find some key pivotal positions where they're both playing on the same team, I think you're halfway there. Let's go back to the iron workers before I let you go. The bar, or the girder, if you will, has been set high by winning the whole shebang last year. Will not winning again 
Can that still be a successful season? Yeah, look, I mean, I, clearly there'd be disappointment all around. Um, we've got a high, like you said, we've got a high benchmark. Um, we're certainly going to do everything we can to win it again um, and want to win it again. Um, so I think it would be, we'd walk away a bit disappointed if we didn't. But the, the competition's gotten fierce. I mean, the 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 team, all the teams have gone in recruiting. Um, the great thing about MLR and what's happened with the trajectory of, of player quality over the last four or five years is it's just gone up hockey stick exponentially. You know, it's just... And you just don't know. I mean, it's going to come down to injuries. It's going to come down to cohesion. Uh, some of these, some of these teams have been together for a long time. Are going to put 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 right on the field a, an incredible team. Our squad is quite small in comparison to some of the other teams in the league, um, but we want to make sure that uh, the depth is there. Um, you know, and and we have coverage for for instances where we do have it um you're going to see a different style of rugby than what you've seen from us in the past it will not be the same um and i'm sure if you look at our roster you, you'll uh, you'll see that we're going to play a, a very uh, action-packed fast game of rugby and um so you'll see some changes that you have that that, that would that are different this year that that uh, were last year and uh that, that that's that's what we need to do to improve and that's what uh uh, the league in general is doing to improve. I can't wait till the season starts because this is going to be a, a much more competitive um, and uh, closer fourth season, I think, than you'll see from last year uh, because ev every team has is, is really gone above and beyond from a recruitment perspective, and it's just going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. Well, I know. I'm, I'm excited, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at the venue. Uh, great having you on. Thanks for taking the time out. All right, Matt, take care. Thanks to all and get everyone out there to uh, come and support us at Mount Vernon this year. They won't be disappointed. And just like that, we're out of time. Thank you to John Fitzpatrick of Rugby Morning. Thank you to Rugby New York, Sky Bolton, Old Glory DC's Marcelo Blanco and Threatened Palamo. And thank you for tuning in. Please be sure to check out our other rugby wrap-up content, including the critically acclaimed The Rugby Odds, the college rugby wrap-up, please hit that subscribe button on YouTube and join our weekly newsletter. And please, please, please join our American Red Cross blood donor team. 